Don't miss the free giveaway at the end of the video. Coming up in canoe trout fishing part three, we're going to discuss some apparel that'll actually make a difference in your fishing, plus some products that are going to save you some money. Let's talk about fishing. I'm going to show you some techniques today that is going to help you catch more fish flat out. In fact, there's an old saying, 10% of the fishermen catch 90% of the fish. And over the years, I think the disparity is actually greater than that. So with that in mind, if you already do these techniques, pat yourself on the back, watch your friends, watch other people fish, and rarely will they do them, and you will seldom ever see anybody do all three consistently. And the people that do all three, those are the people that find themselves in that five or 10% of the fishermen that catch most of the fish. Now, just because you do these things doesn't mean you're automatically going to be in that five or 10%, but you're on your way. So let's get started. The topics we're going to talk about today are strictly related to trout fishing, either in a lake, a river, stream, creek. These are techniques that are going to get you more fish. Now, if you're a bass fisherman with a fly rod, which I am, I'm nuts about bass, there's some different techniques that put you in that upper echelon. Same thing with saltwater. Again, there's some different things or skills that you need to accomplish in saltwater. So this is going to be related to trout fishing and hopefully it does help you catch more fish. The three topics we're going to cover today are hook sets, rod tip in the water for line management, and the leader lift or stealth cast. We're going to talk about setting the hook. This is so you catch more fish and you don't break them off. Rod tip in the water straight line. You're just going to twitch your rod either to the left or the right. And you need to move your indicator about four to six inches. Practice at short distance, little flick. That will hook up your fish and you will not break them off because you'll load the rod. Slowly twitch. All you got to do is move it about four to six inches. Now, if you got a farther cast, as you cast farther, you're going to have to hit it a little harder to get that quick pull that's four to six inches. So at a longer cast, you're going to have to hit it a little more to get that quick pull that's about four to six inches. And practice this on every cast before you pick up. After indicators, move on to dry flies. Once you perfect the dry flies, move on to grease lines, basically for shallow water nymphing. You will no longer bust off fish and your hookups will skyrocket. I mentioned there's three things that you can do to catch more fish. And that is putting the rod tip in the water. What happens when you strip it in like this? I'm gonna do an exaggerated pull and lift. Got it here and I'm gonna give a big couple strips like this. And you can see the bow of the line just pulls it in and the flag, fly just drags through the water. No action whatsoever. But if we have that tip in the water, and I'm giving little twitches, uh, Dave Whitlock said it best, we're puppeteers at 40, 50, 60 feet, whatever the distance is. When your tip's in the water, you, you're giving action to that fly. Rod tip in the water. Fail. It'll kill the action of your fly. Even a little bit, it'll kill the action. Tip in the water. Another thing you can do to catch more fish is when you pick up your fly, straighten your line, pull in a little bit, and then slowly pick up till the leader's in, only in the water and then pick up your fly. It'll make a perfect back cast and you don't disturb the water. I call this the leader pickup. Some people have called it a stealth pickup. Straighten the line, slowly pick up till your leader's in the water only and then pick up. This is what happens when you don't do a leader pickup. It's called rip in the water and you basically scared every fish for that whole area. And it's worse if you have your rod tip out of the water, which we already talked about. So we're gonna cast out, straighten the line up, slowly pick it up till the leader's out of the water and complete your cast. The reason this setting is so critical is when we cast, if you cast a spinning rod, a bait casting rod, we're actually casting the lure. And the lure takes our line out. Fly fishing is different. We really don't cast the fly, we cast the line. And the line carries the fly. So if you end up setting like this, not only did you disturb the water, 
but the weight of the line measured in grains per foot will have enough force if that fish is going the other way. If you're on light tip, it'll snap it off every time. So if you're like this and you set like this here, boom, you're gonna bust off your fish, plus you've disturbed the water. But if you're down to the side and you do a little twitch, that's all it takes. And then when you practice this, you'll be amazed. You'll be watching your indicator and you're gonna do a little, just to, before you pick up, you're just gonna practice, I'm gonna practice setting. You've moved it, your indicator will shoot down because your fly was sitting in front of a fish. You gave it that little twitch, it put life in that fly and the fish will suck it in. It happens more times than not. So just practice that at every distance, short distance, longer distance, and just give that fly as you straighten out your line, just give it a little twitch, just enough to twitch it. Three to four inches, that's all it takes to set a hook. We talked about the stealth pickup or what I call the leader pickup. If you're here, we pick up our line till our leader's just in the water and then we pick it up and it makes a perfect back cast. Lays that line out. Pick it up right here, boom. As long as our rod tip's in the water, we're gonna get a real clean cast and we didn't disturb the water. But if we pick up the line like this with the rod tip up, especially, every fish is gone. You've ruined it for you and you've ruined it for everybody else that's gonna fish that hole for the next 30 minutes or an hour. It takes that long for fish sometimes to cool off. So remember, line out, straight line, slowly pick up, boom. Hey, we're out fishing today. Um, this is a bunch of products that Scotty gave me uh, for this video um, to show off in this canoe because of that uh, innovative rail system that we've talked about in other videos. All this stuff uh, connects to the rail system, slide it wherever you want in seconds, uh, attach rod holders, fish finders, transducer mounts, um, fantastic. And in fact, the only negative thing I think you could say about Scotty is possibly they're overbuilt for at least my canoe application. Uh, you're, the canoe is going to fall apart before this falls apart. Uh, it's a great product. Uh, although I purchased my own uh, products from Scotty, I get them through Amazon, or I can also find them through uh, West Marine where I picked them up before. They carry Scotty products as well. Scotty's been around for years. It's a universal uh, boat accessories from crab pullers to fish uh, rod holders, etc. It's a great product. Um, I have several kayak and canoe clubs and kid fishing clubs that I donate all my gear. So when a company gives this for the video, I show it off, we talk about it, and then I donate it. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a drawing <coughs> for a lot of this stuff. And I want you to send me an email and I'll put it down description below. The email is van sporting, V A N S P O R T I N G, at gmail.com. In the subject bar, write giveaway. In the very first sentence in the email, write giveaway. That's all you have to do. I'm going to pull them out by random. If you wrote giveaway on them, I'm going to pull all those emails aside. I'm going to have uh, my neighbor kid come over and grab some emails and point to them. Um, if you have a particular item, put that down. If it's still here, I'll definitely send it to you. And uh, I'll put up the results in August uh, in one of my videos. Um, I'll let you know uh, who won the products. And by then, I have contacted you uh, by email. Let's talk about safety gear here. <coughs> Scotty has a little safety packet here. It comes with a flashlight, a whistle, which is required on many waterways, and a throw rope. And I've already used because I have one of these. I already used this up here uh, about a month ago. This guy came out, he was almost 80 years old. And to take a line from, a steel line from Jim Harbaugh, this guy was tougher than a $2 steak. <laughs> um, we tried to, he had this little kayak. It looked like Hobie gave birth. 
and this thing was like four feet long. It actually fit in his Jeep, so that lets you know how small it was. Doors closed, everything fit in his Jeep. He comes out, and he's a small man anyway. Look, kind of reminded me of Jacques Cousteau, just wiry. I called him uh, um, basically a fly fisherman disguised as sinew at the end, and I'll explain why. He goes to get in the kayak, and he's kind of tiltery because this thing's um, real unstable. And me and another gentleman say, hey, can we hold that for you? He goes, nope, nope. I got to do it myself. I got to learn it. And that will come clear later. He wasn't in the water for 15 minutes. I hear this hooping and hollering. He had gone overboard. Rods in the water, fly boxes in the water. A couple guys, drift boat came over. Uh, I don't know if it was Robert. Picked him up, had him on the drift boat, but couldn't paddle because he was holding on to him. Another guy was starting to gather his gear and his kayak, etc. So I went out with a throw rope. Got the throw up to the boat, pulled them in the side, and then we proceeded to pull them up the bank. Now this bank on this particular lake is kind of muddy and murky and uh, boggy. So I've got his uh, left arm over my shoulder, the other guy's got his right arm over his shoulder, and we're walking, he goes, whoa, 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 my leg's coming off. <laughs> and me and the other guy's eyes get really big, and I kind of figured it out shortly. He goes, I have a prosthetic. So I go, all right. So I've got his arm over it, and I'm reaching out with my right hand, grabbing his prosthetic. And every time we lift, we have to pull it out of the mud because it's sticking. Kind of a comical event. We get him up to shore. And like I said, this guy was tough. He walks out. He sits down on his uh, um, tailgate of his Jeep. And goes, hey, Ron, because he got to know my name, picks up his prosthetic and goes, this is why it was so heavy. It had half the lake in it. He pours out this giant puddle with his prosthetic leg. Uh, real nice guy. Like I said, tougher than heck. The good news was all his equipment was labeled with his name. We found fly boxes all the way down the lake. And <clears throat> he lived in Redding, which is near this lake. So uh, um, one of the guys said, hey, I live near there, I'll drop them by. So I gave him all the fly boxes, and uh, um, so he got his gear back. Um, no harm, no foul. But remember, and the good thing he was, he was wearing a life preserver. And he said that was the first and last time he's going to use that kayak. And he was pretty enamored with his canoe. And I said, yeah, for 46 pounds, it weighed way less than his miniature baby kayak. Anyway, so safety rope is a good thing to have. The Winona Pro Staff really like the Yak Attack products and they have taken the kayak world by storm. So Yak Attack is an additional option for that Versa Gunnel. Coming up in canoe, trout fishing, part three. We're going to discuss some apparel that will actually make a difference in your fishing, plus some products that are going to save you some money. With that in mind, hit the bell, subscribe, you know what to do, share it with your friends.